did this one myself, Laura. You know, I was, I was thinking about, uh, I used to, to pay someone in Fiverr to do like a short video or something. And I was like, uh, iMovie just released new features like these, these effects. And I was like, uh, I'm going to try it. And uh, I'm just give a, a Pomodoro, one Pomodoro, like 15, 25 minutes to that. And after three hours, I guess, <laughs> I, I came up with this thing. I have, I have two problems when it comes to time management. I don't manage my time. So I have lots of... Uh, uh, triggers, so I stopped doing what I was doing to do what I need to do, something like that. And um, and this thing about uh, starting to learn something, and when I see, I have about fifty tabs in my browser. Oh and no! I something completely <laughs> I <didn't know> that. <laughs> And uh, this is nice. So this this is me learning something. So I, I I'm always. Here, <laughs> this is what you need to learn right now. But it helped me to, it helped me to know stuff I would never know about if I kept focus on. So, for one one example, and I want you to, the first question is about this is a huge pre question. But uh, uh, 2003, I was understanding more about software development, but uh, the cycle software development cycles and um i got into this uh, one of like the third tab or something i got into this article um saying bad things about this um uh, this methodology it was called it is called extreme programming so and i was like uh, it talked about automated tasks it talked about pair programming it talked about metaphors and was like you i need that this this, this is this is me and uh but the article was saying bad things about it but uh, i was like uh, okay so th th this article is wrong so i need to understand what <laughs> is this real deal about it and every time i learned something about software um it was not my focus <laughs> so uh how software development came to you this is my first question like you were doing something and, hmm, what's this yeah 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 no it was exactly like that so um i was in a job that i wasn't really enjoying all that much and i was like you know i i want to progress my my career um, and I think the only way to do that is to study something. So I was looking around at courses in um, business analysis and just a, an ad popped up on Facebook for like a free five day coding course, um, HTML, CSS. Um, and I was like, oh, you know, I've, I've heard about coding. It looks quite cool. I'll give it a go. Um, and I did, and that and that just totally hooked me. Um, and yeah, that that was it. Then I never looked back, really. Very nice. And I was wondering. Um, so I see, I see you do a lot of stuff related to the front end. Um, this is kind of first, you know, first look first. Oh, I need this. This is this is me. Or you try it back end or any other sorts of uh, technologies. Yeah, it's it's funny actually because uh, I've just started in my first job, um, and my role is looking after the API, so not no front end whatsoever. Um, so it's it's back end um, in Ruby, Ruby on Rails, um, and yeah. But I I do love front end. I love the creativity of it. But I also like back end. I think it's anything to do with code at the moment. I, I'm still loving it i still it's still in awe of it really you know like um what you can do with it and learning new stuff and obviously i'm learning ruby now and it's like the similarities and the differences it, it, yeah it's great i love it i love the language i i would say that ruby um i'll go further uh there's a framework ruby on rails and um we have what we have right now in web development because of Rails. Um, so I'm the, I'm the kind of person that don't let anyone talk bad things about Ruby or Rails because, uh, you know, if you have calm and tranquility building your software right now in using 
predefined folders with what you need to do on each side of the models and views, it's because of Rails. So, you know, um, it's, it is so cool. But I would say this, um, you working with APIs and having your speciality as software, as a front-ender, um, you can share like, a, mm, this API is not good because if I'm going to build something with this, this is mm -mm, not good. And uh, th this, this is something I always, um, I'm, I'm a, I would say I'm more of a back-ender, okay? And um, I would say to you that I, I built some really crappy APIs in my <laughs> history because yeah. I was like, I was not, um, I ignore uh, the experience developing the front end for it. Um, and I started developing in 1996, 2009, okay? So we were talking like, more than a decade after, it was the first time I thought about, hmm, I might need to learn more about designing APIs. Um, it was a time where Twitter, they were detaching the front end and the back end and using the APIs on the back end. I was like, okay, so we need more stuff to learn. And, um, this is this is nice you know i i would say to you that you're going to become more you know like a generalist in back end i would say if you don't want to you know but you're gonna be a much better front-end developer because you know what they know like the you know uh yeah, yeah. i think maybe my love for back end might come through um you know i might never go back to front end but i guess you can't say never can you never never um, uh, i i i i would say another thing to you i never left an ability i got behind so yeah. i became uh, this big generalist yes. but i've decided that way so i can tell you a little bit about ux writing i can tell you about developing chatbots i can tell you about building platforms i can tell you about uh SRE and building cloud and then scalability. Um, but I'm not a specialist in any of those. Um, yeah. What I know I'm not good at is front end. Okay, <laughs> this, this is, I, I know, this is a reality. Uh, I, 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 can, I can go with the flow, but I'm not, I'm not the one. Uh, I will call you. <laughs> Let's get Laura here, bring her. <laughs> we need Laura. <laughs> stuff like that but uh this this is us growing and we we start checking as a software developer we start checking okay this is me but i never say never that's that's me i go with you um another question i have to you is what is your process when you are one when you want to start a new project do you go um the same frameworks or you change what what are the options you go when you start a new project um yeah i think i look at the problem that needs to be solved and the most simplistic way to solve that problem you know i don't want to start throwing javascript in there or or a framework in there if i don't need to um so i think quite a lot of my sort of freelance projects early on, I wasn't very good at JavaScript, but it didn't need it, you know. They're very simple one-page websites for small businesses in the UK, so it only needed to be very simple. Um, so sort of with the larger projects um, that I did, I did them in boot camp, so my process there was uh, sort of within a group, and discussing with that group where, where we were going to take it. And I think we had an end goal in mind. Um, always the back end we worked on together because it was the area where we felt least comfortable, I think. Um, and then the, the front end we would split individually. Okay. Okay. And um, um, I saw one, one of your projects in your portfolio is, uh, I, I would say this because I don't see a lot of people taking care of this. You're using just vanilla JavaScript, just pure. And um, 
right now I see most people just jump into frameworks and they, they become, people don't become JavaScript developers, they become these framework developer. And um, I, the first time I, I saw myself knowing something specifically, um, it was a day where I, I was at home studying and I was like, uh, okay, I'm gonna do that same feature I did today I'm going to do it from scratch because I was using a framework and the, that framework gave me lots of layers and I didn't have to take care of lots of things. And um, that was a great exercise because I figured that I, I didn't know lots of things about programming using yeah. the language to get the same result. And uh, it also helped me to understand what was going through the framework so for troubleshooting, I was much better at trying to understand, oh, this is here. This, the problem is here. So because I, I got the flow and, and the events and what's happening. Um, so right now, um, what, what is the, the, the frameworks you are most playing with? And what or do you have interest in learning more? Um, yeah, definitely at the moment it's Ruby. Like I'm, I'm really loving it. I like the syntax. Um, I, th I find it really simple. And I don't know if that's because it is quite similar to sort of languages that I've seen before, like JavaScript and Python. But um, I'm definitely finding it, like I'm progressing a lot quicker with, with Ruby. Um, so I'm excited to to learn more of that and move on to like Ruby on Rails. Um, React has been my favorite one that I've learned so far, I think. Um, so we went through at bootcamp, you know, vanilla JavaScript um, and then on to React. And I think like you said, it was much easier to understand like where it was going wrong or perhaps what I needed to do with my understanding of JavaScript. And I think if you jump straight into a framework, yes, you will be able to do it, but whether you'll be able to unpick it is another story, I think, if if you know something goes wrong. Very nice, very nice. One one other question about um, the, the HTML, CSS. Um, were you a more visual person from the start? Like, uh, do you have any any back experiences that helped you um, learning more about this? Um, I mean, when I was in college, I did all well from from school. Really, I, I studied art, and then in college, I did photography, fine art, and graphic design. Um, and I went to uni for a year um, studying graphic design, but. I didn't like, well, it's not that I didn't like it. It was their style of teaching didn't suit me. Um, and I just didn't feel like I could go through with it. And also they'd taken a lot of the creativity out of it for me. They were like, you must do it in this way. And it felt less authentic. Um, so I decided not to sort of carry that on. So I have always been like quite a creative visual person. Um, but then I think also you, you, well, if you follow courses like I did Free Code Camp or Code Academy, they take you through HTML and CSS first. And so I think you develop those visual um, elements, if you like, first before you get into the sort of logical um, programming. I would say that the photography experience helped you to understand more about perspectives and lenses because I... I loved your website, like, uh, you know, the structure and how you start showing information and how do you structure it. And, um, and, and, and this, is, this is the next uh, question I would like to make to you because the knowledge sharing, you know, you look at all your posts in Dev2 and all the, the topics you were bringing, it's, it's so, there's so much power in there. Like, you know, I, I can see, you know, I just got, the, you know, I put this, this shirt today for Creative Commons because, you know, I, I when I when I 
it was like my first experience playing with uh, communities of practice and um, 2002. So it's 18, eight, 19 years right now playing with. And when I first did that, I was like, mm, this is, this is, I need to, this is, have to be with me my whole life. I need to be sharing what I know. And um, it's not about, I need to know more than you. To me, it's more about, I need you to learn faster than I did. Then I will be successful. <laughs> yeah. This is the way I think. And I look at your website and I, I see like a, you know, a big uh, uh, post, like a learn faster than I did. Here's how I, here's my thing, you know, read this. And, uh, and we, we have these, um, I would say technology is uh, still a very toxic um, community. And uh, this, my question is about knowledge sharing, people that relate to you about learning and how do you play with trolls? You know, how that, that goes with you? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just really want to help other people. I think for me, this whole journey has brought me so much personally. Like I have never been so confident or so happy in myself um, and so sure that I have a future. You know, there were times in my life I went through really dark times where I sort of felt like, would it be easier if I wasn't around? And finding tech has... Um, or coding should I say has like given me a purpose and I really want to um, be that voice for other people that I think I needed in those times and just say you know look you might not know anything today but you will do and and I want to help you get there um, if if you're interested you know um, so it's definitely that and um, I I love being part of the community like I've never found a, a group of people so willing to help and to share their knowledge and I don't know if it's the way that I communicate with people but I don't I don't touch wood I've never been like trolled or had um you know I've had a few people say like oh do you have a following because you're female and you're attractive and I and I you know I didn't like that very much and I and I went on a bit of a rant about it. But other than that, I, I don't get any sort of negative reactions. When I my DMs have been open from the start and the only things I get are can you help me get started? Like, oh, you're a really big inspiration to me. And I think that helps, you know, me want to be part of the community because I know that I am helping people and I and I'm getting a positive yeah. reaction. Let, let me tell you this, um, your followers, they're not luck. It, it's, it's because you have a great portfolio websites, because your GitHub is it's full of examples and ways that people can learn what you learn. This is not luck, you know? No, no I don't think it's luck. I think it is hard work. But I yeah. think when, if I would say I would say that luck was that you had that photography that you drop it, the, the courses where you didn't like the way the teacher was teaching you, that can be called luck. Yeah. Because those, those choices made you become what you become right now because you could be like inside this bottle and uh, oh, this is, this is Laura. She's, she's a person that always said yes to teachers. <laughs> but, yeah, for you know, sure. And, and I, I, I saw you, you sharing this about the learning process and teachers not helping you to develop your creativity. Um, I have another project here in Brazil um, that we call, in English would be called uncan people, getting people out of cans because, you know, I, I saw everybody look like the same. You have to learn this, this way. And I want people to become who they are. And they were something at some point, and someone said, "No, no, no! You have to be square." And so let me be. You have to be okay. Now you fit. Now you are good to go because you are just like everyone else. Um, and this is this is not how we play, you know. Because um, I don't know when 
I, I have I have lots of privileges in my life. Like uh, I never had to pay for yeah. Well, last year I had to pay, but for during three years I didn't have to pay for my college. You know, my parents were able to to pay it for me. I have I have zero um, you know issues about money or not the richest person, but I never had to think about what I'm gonna eat today or something like that. So. I had lots of privilege. I'm a white person. I am tall. You know, there's a lot of nobody who can stop me on the street saying, oh, what you doing? No, never. Um, so I got to understand more about those privileges and like, OK, how do I, you know, help people to, to grow faster than I did? And this is not about, um, you know, um, understanding that, uh, OK, you got something. Now you share and you share much more than you got. And you never stop sharing because there's always going to be someone there needing your information, needing your knowledge. Um, and it's not also about to get something back. Mm. You don't wait that. You just share. And uh, if it relates to someone, some when, you know, because th this, is, this is something like uh, I saw a post from you. There were, you know, more than weeks, months ago those related to me. And that's nice because it's Daniel right now learning more about you. You know, I don't know how do I get to your profile. But someone from my followers liked something from you and I saw and I clicked on the GitHub and I saw on the website, I gotta talk to Laura. Oh, you know, yeah. I have to, to ask her about her process to learn, to share. And um, this, is, this is my next question, like, uh, what is your process to build your content? Like, uh, do you have something pre-scheduled or you're just leaving and documenting what you're learning? What is your, what, and, and I would like to, you to zoom in in the process to create your portfolio website. Okay. Because I help lots of people um, starting software development. And they, they are always going to build their profile website and their portfolio website. It always, it's always in the future. And uh, every time I talk to them, I was like, do it now. You know, put, put a page and, and say your name and the link to your Twitter or LinkedIn and put it out, the first version. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is something I want to learn from you, your content process. Yeah, um, I think I only create content if I have an idea that I think is going to help other people. Like, I don't want to say I'm going to do something daily um, and then it not be wor worthwhile, you know, because um, either I'm wasting somebody else's time, they're reading something that isn't really helpful or I'm wasting my own time. Um, because you know I am I am quite busy at the moment, um, so yeah I only I only do it when I I've got an idea that I think is going to help or inspire other people, um, and then I'll just sit down sort of um, in a day and and produce something. I think my portfolio, it was my I think third or fourth attempt. Like I would had early portfolios and I kept changing it and. A week later, I was like, oh, I hate it. I think it looks really ugly. So, yeah, I think it was actually my fourth attempt. Um, and obviously, uh, I went to boot camp. So their careers team were quite um, not pushy. That's the wrong word. Uh, quite strong in saying, you know, you need to get these things, um, these sort of deliverables finished. So there was things like our readmes on our GitHub, which I still haven't done. <laughs> um our portfolio our linkedin and our cv so that they could like review and give us feedback and what have you um so i was like right i'm going to sit down today and you know make a start um i decided to do it in react because i was still learning and it was my fa it, well it still is my favorite i think um and it it just didn't go well from the start. And I think in the end, it took me about a week 
um of getting up and I would wake up in the middle of the night and be like oh I know how to do it now so I'd like run to my laptop like change it again um yeah with with my portfolio I just wanted something different um I can't remember his name but there's a guy who's got a portfolio and it's like a a browser game through his career history and stuff like that I'll try and find a link and you can share it on the channel but um yeah it's, it's a really great portfolio and I was like that is so different and you know really makes him stand out and makes you want to learn more about him and I was like I want to produce something that I'm proud of and that I won't look back on in a week and be like oh I don't really like it or I can see some UI issues and they they make me feel uncomfortable you know um and I had this sort of mermaid idea from my personal statement um which was something I came up with um sort of through through boot camp I I we were talking in boot camp about personal brand statements and I don't know if I just didn't link the two together they were like you need to write one it needs to be this that and the other here are some examples and I was like oh they're so boring I was like you know I did this and I decided to make a career change and blah you know it was just very like matter of fact and I was like you're a person you've got a personality like show it in your writing you know a lot of um my peers in bootcamp were like I'm, I'm really struggling getting started and I was like well mine's a bit out there but you can read it if you want um and I don't think it was that helpful because it's so personal um but that's something I wanted so I had yeah the mermaid idea and I was like what would be really cool and what I really want to try is parallax um, sort of scrolling so there's an element of that in that the background moves um, slower than the rest of the content um, and then I was like it would be really cool if when you scroll up you go like under the sea and different sea creatures come in and yeah it just sort of built from and you there. Got to the bottom it was like a, yeah I just got to the bottom of the sea yeah man so it's, it's like but in, the, in this there is one thing you you just share about it, it's so personal yeah we should be able to, this is me, exactly me. I'm not anyone else, I'm just me. And yeah. um, you have to learn to like my work and what I do because it's me. I have a name, I have an identity, I have abilities, I have things I, I care about. And the, all of this needs to come together when I'm working for someone. So, you know, this, this is... This is something I, I, I would say that um, I it took me it took me a while to understand more about this, and uh, you know, um, because I was I was much more. I have to work all the time. I need to work. I have to continue working until I don't see more work. <laughs> it got got me into this vicious cycle where I. I would say um, there's a movie from Adam Sandler called Click. Yes. Got, yeah. They got this remote. That was me, you know. I, I, can, I can tell you a couple of years in my life where I don't know what happened. Yeah. I can tell you nothing I did on those years. I remember yeah. like, okay, I, I did this lecture. And I don't know what happened. <laughs> and and some friends, oh, we got this, we have this big party, you came together, we got to have fun. I wasn't drinking, but I don't remember, you know. And this is something I, I was like, uh, whoa, what I have done to my life. So when I when I started realizing that, I was like, so how can I keep track of my life? Like, what can I do? So um, that's when I started blogging more. Mm. It's like a, I kind of document what I did, so no, someday I can come back and and see what's happened. What happened those those years? Um, and uh, right now, for right now, for almost two three years, I would say that I start journaling more and and writing. So every morning I have this uh, uh, process of uh, writing a couple of lines or a page. I don't know what what happens to happen during the the process, like. Uh, but it it's um, it helps me to 
to get the flow of the morning and uh, and starting my day and uh, reflect of whatever is in my mind. So I, I want to take it out so that I just can focus on what I need to do. But it's um, this is this is very nice. Like you got your website, you got your your way to express yourself. Uh, I know I, I love the care you have with the with the GitHub profile. You know. The, little details because it, it helps you if you want to become front-end developer or working with software development um, the techniques you know you can learn if you don't know but you you can learn you know how to care if you don't care already yeah. you know it, you can enhance that but you need to care at some level so you can become you know um, more aware of that and um this is this is something very important and uh, do you have uh, are you afraid to to share content how was the process to publish the first mm. blog post <laughs> yeah scary um so when i first started with twitter i was terrified like i have instagram i have facebook but i don't really use them um, I've probably got like 50 followers, so you know, very low. Um, and I was like, oh, Twitter's just going to be another one where I, I just, you know, post into a void and no one really likes it and no one really cares. And um, so I just, I just started. I was like, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of, you know. No one, I think, unless you are get very unlucky, no one's going to comment on your first post being like, well, that's rubbish. You know, they're going to be supportive. And I think one thing that um, I found is people aren't being critical when they write to you and they say, oh, you've got like a UI issue on, on your website or um, you've put a spelling mistake here or whatever. They're not, they're not trying to be critical. They're trying to help you so that your content looks its best. Um, and they'd probably want you to do the same uh you know like me and my friend ro um we we spoke um a little while ago about how you know if you've got a website and it's out there and it's got ui issues and people are finding that it's like the equivalent of having spinach stuck between your teeth and no one telling you like you want to know um and and it's not like people being horrible um so yeah that that sort of naturally led on so through Twitter, I was sharing, and because I was um, doing the 100 days of code, I was getting quite a lot of um, feedback and interest because other people were doing the same thing. And I think that made it much easier when I came to share my first blog post. Um, my first one was uh, like a beginner's guide to Git and GitHub. And I didn't expect it to do like as well as it did do. Um, I can't remember the number of readers now, but it's in the thousands and I see people share it on Twitter all the time. Um, yeah, so it, it was quite scary, but I got somebody who was like, who had been in the tech industry a while. Like I found someone through Twitter. I got him to read through it and just let me know that I, I had understood the concepts and, and then I felt comfortable sharing because I was like, well, I've not made any massive errors. Um, but I think one thing that's um, one bit of advice, I guess, is don't be afraid to share that first piece, even if someone's written about it a hundred times before you, the way that you say it might engage like the right person or you might really help, even if it's one person, wouldn't you want to put it out there, you know, um, so just do it. Um, and also, yeah, get get a proofreader because it just gives you that extra little bit of confidence um, that you you know what you're talking about. Yeah, this is nice. And um, um, having these uh, closed network for where people can you can like get the first two or three feedbacks and um, people can you know share those little details about the writing. Uh, this is cool. I have um, my process right now. I, I would say I started like you, like you did, like searching for, you know, the same process. Um, right now, I really don't care what people think about my writing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's it's the, because it's like, um, 
it's me dispatching what I'm thinking right now. So mm. this is not about if you like it or not. This is me. It's just me. Yeah. So at, at this moment, I'm writing a lot more about different topics, not only development. But um, when I write about development, it's much more, I would, say, I would say my last four posts about development is something for so I can't, I can't forget. Like, uh, you know, uh, yeah. I always forget about how do I amend a commit on Git? Okay, I put a blog post on this because I never want to forget the, the line about how they do it. And uh, so I start building blog posts so, so I don't forget how, about how to do things, you know. Um, so I found it uh, very, very, um, you know, helpful about doing those things. Like, uh, you know, when we start changing uh, the master to main, um, oh, I have to learn about playing with branches. Oh, shit. I hate branches. You know, I'm a, I am a trunk-based development um, lover. So yeah. it's yeah. always on the main. And, and 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 every goes ready to production if they need to. This is my my thought process. And uh, so okay, I have to learn how to change branches and how to play with it. So uh, if I'm gonna write about it because I'm never gonna learn again how to do it. Um, so I I I do this. Some of my tech blog posts are also uh, almost always related to this. Oh, I don't want to forget this. Okay, so I'm gonna write a blog post about it so other people can find about and and uh, it turns out that uh, i did one these days about uh, commons in git that i i fail I, I i do mistakes all the time using those commands and uh and people oh do, do, cool cool post okay so but um it was not my intention to to have something that could be good for someone else like a, yeah got you Kind of a, I'm kind of a selfish, but I, I expect it to relate to someone else. But I'm, I, I write for myself. I would say that. But this is, is it's a decades writing and process, and, and but um, it's very good. Let me ask you another question. Um, diversity in technology is always a topic where we we really need to, need to to care about. Um, and I wanna, I wanna see your your take on this. Like, uh, how was it on the the boot camp? Like, uh, they they play to search for diversity when they're building mm -hmm. the team to, to play the, the the class of the boot camp. Um, how do you see right now? Um, you know, girls come up to you and to to get help to get into the tech tech space. What is what is the process you see? Yeah, um, I think. It's getting better. I would like to hope it's getting better. Um, you know, in my in my boot camp, there were six girls and twenty. There was twenty three of us in total. I think only six were female. Um, so obviously, you would like that number to be higher. But I think the trouble is the public image of programming um, and the stereotype. Um, is that it's done by nerdy teenage boys um, or 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 men, you know, that that are antisocial and just sit in a corner staring at their laptop. I think that's those are stereotypes that we need to break down, but that's going to take time, I think, and we need to start sort of quite young um, in school. Um, sending female role models into schools to tell girls you know this is a, a valid career for a female and you could be really good at it and I think also you don't see much of female um, like CTOs or CEOs you know just yesterday I was reading about um, I think she's CEO of Bumble um, and yeah that that was like really inspiring for me um, and, you know, we've got CTO of Starbucks, it's a female, but you don't really hear about them. You hear about the Mark Zuckerbergs, you know, um, Jeff Bezos, you know, those big names in tech, they're all men. Um, and I think those are things that we need to, to be more wary of. Like me, myself, I just started with another girl that I met on Twitter, um, a woman in tech discord. 
Um, so for people who don't know what Discord is, it's, it's basically like a chat room where you can have different channels. Um, so overall, our theme is women in tech. So it's invite only for other women. Um, and then inside there, we've got things like a mentoring channel, a coding questions channel, a general chit chat channel. Um, and you can also make suggestions of what you want to get added and what you want to talk to other women about. Um, so I think it's groups like that that we need to encourage. And also, um, I'd really like to start going into schools in my local area and and like um, working with school age children and teaching them how to code and sort of showing them the different career paths that are available. Because I think if someone had come into my school um, at the point where I was making choices for sort of my GCSE subjects, I don't know what you call it there, but a high school like certificate. Okay. Um, I would have picked um, IT or I would have focused more on IT had I known the sort of opportunities that are out there and and that it is open to diversity, I think. I think you can't say everyone's like, oh, we don't want women here because I've never. No, um, you can't. You need, you need, you need, we need diversity. Software development, I would say this, um, we see software development as coding but it's just part of the problem. Like I said, it, when you start thinking about a project, you start by the problem. Then after you know the problem, you choose what you need to solve the problem. Um, to me, that part is the best part, you know? And uh, the, the coding starting process is awesome. I love that. But when it gets repeatable, I want to jump to another project. Like when I see where it goes, I can see the, the final line. I'm okay, yeah. you know? So th there are some things I do to, to make it more valuable to me. Like uh, uh, first task I do in a project is the deployment. So, okay, deployment is working. Okay, so now it's always maintenance of code, like uh, just enhancing the code and then it's ready to go where it needs to go. Um, one, one other thing I would like to, to, to talk more about is this, um, this stereotype there, there, this is, this is something, um, because I would say that esports also you, you get, oh, it's just for, for man and, and stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. um, having the, the safe space for the discord like the discord for women tech uh women tech you get a safe space where people can come in and understand what's happening and have other people to chat and learn and get some more reference about life and work um and get ready to go to the to, to the wild i would say <laughs> uh, you know but because but it is very important to to know that you have a place where you can go and you can share what you're feeling and and get help real help um so this is this is very important um i would say if you ask me seven eight years ago seven or eight years ago i would say to you that um, i would not um wanted to see specific groups of women like uh, i would i would want it to let's make it happen the real diversity but um after a couple of years i was like um, hey, okay um we are toxic yeah mm. you can start bringing this whole group together but at some point someone will come in and boom and, and you know, oh we were building this for two years and something happens and uh you know it, it, it becomes to be not cool um so i was like uh, yeah now i i understand you know you, we need to create safe spaces for building trust and then you're ready to go and 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 play against i would say that um those those people or even learning not to listen mm. that would be something even cool about the these um but i i i agree with you we are we are getting more aware of the the need to listen and the need to 
make sure that we are building, uh, also building safe spaces inside companies. So one of my, my companies, I'm, I'm um, all into trying to make sure that people can talk, that can ask for, you know, I need to, I need someone to talk to me about this subject or I'm seeing this issue here. I want to share what I'm feeling and I want people to help me to understand this. So it is a process. Yeah. Um, and I, I say that um, I would like to understand your, your, your view of this point of view of this, like um, before diversity, um, I want to see us talking more about openness. Mm. Yeah. Because, yeah, because otherwise it's just to be like uh, employee branding and we are yeah. not tackling the, the, the real issue, you know? Yeah, definitely. I think like I'm a really open person. Like I'll share pretty much anything with anybody. Um, you know, people have said to me in the past, like, whoa, you're like too honest. And I think, yeah, like honesty does still make us feel uncomfortable. Um, and I feel like we need to sort of shun that idea that it's uncomfortable to be honest and be open. Like, um, if you're if you're wanting to hide your practices then probably they're not they're not good practices you know like if you're ashamed um for your ideas or your thoughts to be out there in public then it probably means you need to re-educate yourself and um you know really take stock on what on what you're thinking and what you're sort of saying um but yeah i think it's it starts with the employers for sure like um being um well just being open and and saying to sort of people if if you see diversity issues then saying to people look i don't like the way that you did that or i don't like the way that you spoke to so and so like do we need to talk about it do you need to go on some sort of training um and yeah just basically making work a safe space full stop like no one should feel comfortable we spend the majority of our time at work um and i would hate to think that people well i know there are people that go to work every day miserable but if we can you know do something to make it better for everyone i think that's something that we'd all want to do you know I, i'm sure you wouldn't want to sit there knowing that your colleague's miserable very nice laura we are getting to our end here um it was a it was a great time i'm very sorry you know just to tell everybody know about this uh i scheduled with laura a week ago <laughs> and uh i see it in my desk here and i was like uh, am i missing something or not and i look at, at my twitter and it was like uh, there's a man. I, I, I sent a message to Laura like this day, this time. I was like, whoa, it's like now, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking to her right now. So whoa, what, what I did? <laughs> and I have I have scheduled to myself like a week after. And I was like, Laura, big failure, big failure. And, but here we are. So I I really appreciate um, the second chance you gave to me, like to for us to have this conversation and. Uh, um i just wish you success in your life like uh, you know you know and and that you can inspire um other people to share content and uh to be who they are this yeah. is yeah you know I hope so. it's very good very good um so there are links in the description for laura website twitter uh github so go follow her and uh, you know, learn from her. Uh, one one of the things, Laura, I would say to people that are starting software development, you have to read code a lot. Read code more than you write code. Yeah, and, definitely. Um, yeah, it's the best place to start. And and copy like fork, uh, you know, a repository from Laura. Run it, see it running, see it working. Change it and start mm -hmm. from there. So, the the remix. Remix is the biggest thing to do to learn. It, at least my point of view is the, the way I learn. Like I copy, I change a little bit. And, oh, I saw and I get it. I'm going to do it myself right now. So it's the, 
the whole process going on. Laura, thank you again. No, thank you. Yeah. It's been great. Really okay. nice to meet you. Okay. Bye bye. See you. Bye.